Hey guys, Nova here. Uh, first things first, I wanted to apologize for being on a hiatus for so long. Um, it's just been really hectic here since around the end of April. We've been at where I work. We've been working 12 hour shifts. It's been really tiring. I have a few chronic fatigue issues anyway. It makes it a little bit rough whenever every time you turn around, go to sleep, you get up, you go to work, you come home, you go to sleep, then continue it over and over again for, you know, you're at work 12 hours a day and I end up sleeping for close to 12 hours a day. And it's just been really tiring. Um, so I needed that hiatus, especially because, you know, my sister just got married. Obviously everything got a little bit hectic with that. It was, it was fun. Everything turned out so well. My nephew looked adorable in his little vest. Oh my goodness. It caused me to kind of want to take a step back just because I needed to be able to focus, to be able to do things, and everything all at once was just getting to be way too much. But hopefully from this point moving forward, I will be consistent with videos, and hopefully I can get this one out today. This one might be a day late from my preferred upload date, but if it is, then oh well. And now that we're past that, I want to actually get into the topic of this video, which probably nobody will be surprised is going to be the whole thing with the Creepshow art situation. Now keep in mind, I'm going to have it along the bottom of the screen after a certain point, and it's going to be there throughout, I think, the whole video. Everything that I say regarding to Shannon and uh, Anthony and all of that is alleged. I have to say it's alleged. It's one of those things, legal reasons, all that, it's alleged, okay? It's allegations. Now that said, before I jump into things, I do want to say outright that I do believe Emily. For a full, complete rundown of the situation, Emily's video will be linked below. I do believe I'm going to post a, a link to Hopeless, Hopeless Peach's video on the subject, and I believe a few others too, so that way... It'll be a full rundown because with the way my brain works, even if I write it out verbatim, I don't, I don't trust myself to give a decent rundown of the whole thing without missing some very important things. So that way for full context and full disclosure, those are down there. And yes, Emily's video is long, but I really, really think that you should watch it like all the way through, unlike a certain other someone I could mention who I don't follow, but I saw the whole thing. He's just like, I'm not going to watch the whole thing because I don't think it, you know, just trying to discredit. And it irritates me. But I wanted to wait a while to actually put this video together and put it out and say something on this for a couple of reasons. One, I'm a tiny channel. Me doing a commentary on this and going over this is not going to do much. It's not. I, I don't think it's going to reach very many people. But I still have feelings about this that I want to get out there. Another reason I waited so long is because I really wanted to wait for as much to come out about this situation as was likely going to come out. Okay? I didn't want to just jump the gun on it. And part of why I didn't want to jump the gun on it is because of the situation that happened a few months ago. The whole Hopeless Peaches situation. Because... Frankly, and I'm going to say this right now, I'm going to be upfront and open about this. I was one of the people who was not as scrutinizing as I should have been in that situation. I was not as scrutinizing as I should have been in that situation, and frankly, most of the community wasn't. It became, oh no, this person's getting exposed, let's dogpile. I will say I never made a video on the subject. I did make a fan art video, a, a video of a piece of fan art for Shannon at the time, because I was an idiot. I'll be frank about that. That video has been, it's been at least privated. I don't remember if I actually deleted it. I'll probably double back and actually delete it. But I just don't feel comfortable, especially with all this coming to light and all that with having that video up on my channel anymore. I just, I don't feel that it's appropriate to keep up. So I did take it down. But I do want to say outright that and I want to say outright to Peaches that I am so sorry that so many of us weren't as diligent 
as we could have been with looking into things. As diligent as we should have been with looking into things. It was, I made a couple of comments on a few videos. It's, they're gone now because the videos themselves are gone. But that doesn't absolve me of the fact that I did make them and I was... It, there was nothing really nasty, but it just... It was one of those things where I was not as scrutinizing as I should have been. And neither was most of the community. I think that those of us who weren't as scrutinizing as we should have been should take responsibility for that. And should openly admit to it and acknowledge that we did and that we were completely misled because we didn't look into things more deeply. Because that's the thing. We were misled because we didn't look into things more deeply. We weren't as thorough as we should have been. And I regret that. And as I said, genuinely, Peaches, I am very, very sorry that so many of us didn't look into things the way we should have and that we weren't as skeptical as we should have been it was wrong and for so much of the community, for the entire community almost, to turn on you over flimsy, flimsy claims. So, I'm sorry. And I don't, you probably won't see this. I just, I'm a teeny tiny channel, you probably won't see this, but I wanted to say it anyway. But getting into the rest of this, there were these posts on LawCal, which Hilariously, I think until some of this stuff started coming up, I didn't even know it was a, a site. Like, I'd heard people mention LolCal a few times, but I didn't know it was actually a site. I legit thought it was like a meme -y thing. I thought it was like a meme thing. I had no clue. Yeah, the hilarious thing, I grew up with the internet and I still just meh. Which, to be fair, quick tangent, the internet didn't get big really until I was more of a teenager. But that's beside the point. Um, allegedly... Shannon made some posts on LawCal, bad-mouthing herself, bad-mouthing other creators, and bad-mouthing just so many people. And there were also ones where she was promoting herself, and allegedly she was arguing with herself repeatedly in, in the posts, which I feel like is really weird. Just why would you do that? But all this started to come out. Finally, um, allegedly... Shannon doxed her sibling. And I say her sibling. A lot of people use, you know, very specific sibling. From what I understand from everything, her sibling is non-binary, prefers they, them pronouns, and has identified that way for a few years now. As such, in the posts and elsewhere, Shannon has allegedly misgendered her sibling. And in some of those posts that Shannon allegedly made, there was a lot of transphobic and ableist and just really nasty language. Really nasty things. It finally came to a head whenever Shannon doxed her sibling, allegedly. And the admins on LawCal outed that it was Shannon. They've got particular ways, if I'm not mistaken, I don't... I am not a tech person, I am not an IT person, um, keep that in mind when I talk about this, but from what I understand from other videos, obviously I'm not going to go into detail about it because I just, I don't know, but from what I understand from other videos, it had to do with not only the IP addresses, but the, uh, the fact that they matched up to different devices that Shannon had been known allegedly to use over a few different years. And I think possibly one way it could have been identified was the cookies on the browser or the device. You know, whatever she used to allegedly access the site. But, uh, I digress. I'm not going to get into that in particular because I don't understand the specifics. I don't understand IT stuff. I just, I don't. I draw. I don't know how to do the, any of the IT stuff. It just, it came out and then after... It was outed that it was allegedly Shannon. Other people started to come forward. And the big one, the one that's had everybody talking because it is a big deal. Because if it's true, and as I said, I believe Emily. I have to say for legal reasons that this is all alleged, but I believe Emily. In my opinion, things seem to line up. 
Emily Artful came forward on first on Twitter. That was where I first saw it. Talking about how for years Shannon and her husband Anthony, if she's married to Anthony, anyway, but that for years Shannon and Anthony allegedly stalked and harassed Emily. I cannot imagine how terrifying that situation must have been, but it's it's horrible. Just the endless harassment and the threats of using pictures of her against her, making her lose her job at one point, allegedly. That just, it's awful. It's awful, and I don't know how anybody can do that to another person. I don't know how anybody with any empathy at all can do that to another person. Especially when you know that the other person has children and has a family and is just trying to live their lives. To me, it's just, it's not right. And I don't, I don't care. That's never right. It, it's never right. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. And it makes me mad. It bothers me. And I think that uh, one thing that I do believe is speculation while I believe it's speculation, I wouldn't be surprised if it was true, especially given that, you know, Shannon has allegedly made comments under the use of a sock puppet account before about, you know, Emily's past as an addict and somebody who is currently in recovery. And, but she makes the comment at one point in her video, I think it's near the beginning, about how this was retribution for her being, you know, an addict. and. I just wanted to say that, and this is one thing that it's it's hard for me to figure out how to phrase properly, because it, it just, it is. It's really hard for me to figure out how to phrase properly, because where I work, I work with people with mental illness, and also with people in recovery, or who are just starting their recovery. People who are starting out either by choice, or because they got in trouble and the court said, go here, you need to detox. From what I've seen, personally, you can never, ever judge why a person might be using. Going into recovery is a hard, difficult thing, and it takes a lot to do that. It takes drive to do that. It's not... Some people have this misconception that it's a simple choice of just, okay, I'm just gonna quit, or okay, I'm just gonna not do that. People don't take into account that there are direct effects. Your body and your mind has to heal, and it's it's an ongoing battle. Recovery is ongoing. It's not, you know, you detox, you're clean for so long, and oh, you're cured. It's not. It's not. It's an ongoing thing, especially because, frankly, from what I've seen, many people, many people who use, are using to either, because there are some people who just got started because, eh, you know, want to use something, want to do something like that. My friends are doing it. You know, that happens. It does. But a lot of times, use is linked to trauma. A lot of people don't know that. There's such a stigma around it. One of the things that is really important with recovery is therapy. But because of that, and because of the fact that Addiction does not discriminate. Addiction does not pick and choose who's, you know, a quote-unquote good or bad person and be like, oh, you know, you're a bad person, have an addiction on top of it. That's not how this works. I have met and seen plenty of people who are good people who are also in recovery and who, whenever they were on something, they still weren't bad. They just weren't in a great state of mind. We talk about it all the time where I work. I talk about it with the nurses sometimes. I talk about it with the counselors sometimes and the other people in my position. Um, frankly, you don't know what could happen that could cause you to end up on the other side of that desk. It could be you get hurt and you get put on a pain medication. And because your body naturally builds a tolerance to it, you end up taking more. And then next thing you know, you have a dependency on it. And I live in, in the state that's, you know, the middle of the opioid epidemic. And it's, there have been people in my family who struggle with addiction and who are in recovery now. Or there are also some who aren't. And it's not that they're bad people. And holding something like that over somebody's head, getting back to the topic, is vile. It's disgusting. And it shows right there that you don't care whether or not somebody gets better. 
You don't care whether or not somebody even tries to get better. You just want to have something to hold over their head. Because especially if somebody's trying, it doesn't reflect poorly on them to call them names because they're in recovery. It doesn't look bad on them because they've used in the past. It doesn't. It's far more of a reflection of you than it is of the person in recovery. It is. And I just think that, yeah, a lot of the things that went on in regard to allegedly Shannon doing this, it does seem like a lot of it was spurred on by petty mean girl crap. It, the fact that it even might be partially as retribution for that, or even just used as an excuse, using retribution for that as an excuse is disgusting and vile. And then getting into just everything else that was done, it's just, it's wrong. If you want the details, like I said, go and watch Emily Artful's video. It's very in-depth. It's, it's a good one. And I know I've rambled a lot, but whenever it gets to things like that, I'm a little bit passionate about it. I, I went on a ramble with the recovery stuff a lot. I, I know I did. But, you know, recovery and mental health are two things that I am passionate about. I don't intend on working in those fields my whole life, even though, even despite where I currently work. But that doesn't mean I can't be passionate about it. And I am, especially because, you know, I've never struggled with, I've never struggled with addiction, except for, you know, SH stuff, which I will kind of censor and put on the screen. Not, not, not pictures, not pictures, the word. Um, but I've struggled with that kind of thing. The pain from that kind of thing was something that, because of the endorphin release, I got addicted to, and I struggle with now. But I have some mental health problems, and as such, it just, it's something I get very, very passionate about. But that aside, moving on, I just, I'm really extremely disappointed in Shannon, because this is just, it's awful, and the fact that there has been no response, not even an attempt to defend herself, aside from that one really long community post, which I think is still the only community post that you can actually see on her YouTube, and the hiding videos, and hiding views, and stuff like that, it's just, mm, it's not a good look. It's, that's pretty, at least in my opinion, that seems pretty damning, you know? It's just, if you don't have anything to hide, why are you hiding? And I'm not sure how much longer this video is going to be. I think I got myself a little bit off track, but I stand by the things that I've said. And I'm very disappointed in Shannon, like I said, because like I, I was a fan. I was a fan of hers. And if, frankly, I should have unsubscribed back during the Hopeless Peaches stuff, especially looking back over it. Um, when things came out more, I did. When things, whenever things about that came more to light, I did unsubscribe, and then all this stuff happened, and it was crazy. Or, I mean, it was just, wow, wow is the best word for it. But I am just very disappointed because, ugh, and I hate saying this, but I did kind of look up to Shannon. That kind of thing, whenever someone you look up to screws up like that, especially, which I feel like saying screws up is just, no, you knew it was wrong. You knew it was wrong, and you did it anyway. That's more than just a screw-up that becomes intentional, allegedly. But I just, I don't know, I've gotten kind of irritated because I've seen some people kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? I've seen some people just straight up not believing Emily because of, because of instances where, you know, she tried to speak in more friendly tones to her stalker during this, and I just, can we not? Seriously, there's another part of fight or flight that some people I've seen called friend or freeze, where you freeze up or you try and befriend or like try and be nice to the other person to try and defuse and de-escalate the situation. And we need to stop. We need to stop acting like just because, just because she wasn't, you know, aggressive back or immediately only disengaging. We've got to, we've got to stop acting like that takes away from her testimony about it. Because it doesn't. It doesn't. Like, frankly, if you're speaking with somebody who is potentially dangerous, at least where I work, um, at least where I work, if somebody starts getting dangerous, potentially physically aggressive or something like that, like, before it gets to the points where, you know, you've got to have intervention by other people, we're taught to try and defuse the situation, try and relate, try and just get things calmed down, and try and do so in a way where the other person isn't going to be 
aggressive towards you afterwards or hold any kind of a grudge. That's not only doing things like that instinctually isn't just a natural response, it's one of the better responses in regard to the reaction. And frankly, nobody can know how they'd react to that situation until they're in it. Just, you can't. You, you cannot know how you would react to that kind of situation until you're in it. So I just, I'm kind of very disappointed and kind of side-eyeing people who are trying to discredit Emily using that. And I do want to say that I do hope that the community really supports Emily going forward and respect her decision to discuss or not discuss about it. That's a big thing that people are going to need to do because it's up to the victim of trauma to decide whether or not they want to talk about something. It's not up to anybody else, it's up to them. So in saying that, just if she doesn't want to talk about things, don't pester her. Don't. It's, it's not right, it's, it's not fair, and you're not entitled to answers to any of your questions about it if she doesn't want to talk about it. But I do want to say I really, really hope that people support her going forward. Like I said, I've been subscribed to Emily for a good few years now. I don't always comment because I'm a shy dork who is just like, oh god, if I comment anything, it's gonna be stupid anyway. And, um, if it weren't for her content, I wouldn't have realized that my favorite traditional medium is watercolor. I didn't know that before. I played around with markers and some other stuff, but, I don't know, painting wasn't really my thing. And then I got started with watercolor and it just kind of, it clicked. And her tip videos are wonderful and amazing and they're so much fun to her humor is so great and so spot on and her videos are so great to watch especially even just like for background while I'm drawing digitally or while I'm doing something else. Shoot, I'll put it on her videos just to listen to while I'm playing a game or something. I'm ADHD, I kind of have to multitask. But um, it's just, I really think that she's someone who, at least to me, seems like she genuinely cares, seems genuinely friendly, and someone who's gone through so much more than anybody should ever have to go through. And it just, it's, it's one of those things that just bothers me to see people being treated like that, no matter who it is. But especially somebody that, you know, I've watched for a good while, and who I see as a little bit of an inspiration, you know? But when it comes down to it, I frankly hope that Shannon does not come back in regard to, to, to the platforms, just because I feel like do it once, just this is just kind of the thing that, mm, unless you can, you know, show that you've changed from doing this, it makes me skeptical that you won't do it again. And as I said, everything I've said in regard to Shannon doing stuff is alleged. It's alleged. These are allegations. But I think that past that, I'm mostly done talking about this. Um, I do want to start, I'm not a drama channel, I will not be consistently covering drama topics, like, no thank you. I don't do drama, it's just this one I really felt like I should, just because I had a few thoughts on it. And it's just, I had a few thoughts on it that were very strong, and I wanted to talk about them a little bit. But I will say that as I said early on in the video, you know, I still stand by, like I said earlier in the video, I'm sorry that the whole community wasn't more diligent and scrutinizing when everything happened with Peaches. And I know that she stepped away from her channel, and I think from her Twitter, but especially her channel, um, that said congrats on the 100k, on the 100k subscribers. I was really glad to see you reach that milestone. But frankly, I hope that in regard to being more diligent on creators and not mindlessly following what they say. I hope everybody's kind of learned to not do that. But I do want to say that if Peaches comes back, I hope that the community has a lot of support for her. If she decides not to, then I hope things go well for her, whatever she does. Whatever she does do. And then in regard to Emily, I really hope that the community just rallies around you and gives you this, the support and the kindness that you need because I know none of this could have been easy to talk about. None of this could have been at all something that... Just this couldn't have been easy, and I think that you're very, very brave for coming forward with it, because it had to have been terrifying. And I hope that the community gives you all the support that you need, and I hope that outside of, you know, outside of the internet, that you have a good support system of people who can help you work through this, and I hope that things just get better, you know? And in regard to the community, we need to do better. Just to the whole community, we need to do better. We need to do better at making sure that we aren't just blindly following people. We need to make sure that we aren't 
you know, frankly, that we aren't standing somebody when they are doing a lot of damage. And I just, we need to do better. And at least in a few individuals, I've seen people starting to do better. And I'm glad for that. So that's really all I wanted to say. Um, obviously with this kind of video, I'm not going to do the little, oh, like and, like and subscribe kind of shell that I do at the end of some of mine where I talk. But I did want to say just thank you guys so much for listening. Um, what do you guys think about this situation? It, it was it was a lot. It was a lot. And I just hope that as a community, we can move forward and do better. Thanks. Bye.